Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om The sages said, O Holy One, what is Shravana? How is Kirtan performed? What is Manana? Please expound these precisely. Brahma said, O wise men, the means of Shravana, hearing, famous in the world, is listening to words concerning Shiva in whatever manner, howsoever, and wherever they are produced, with the same steady attention as in the sporting dalliance with women. By kirtana, glorification, is meant the clear expression of Shiva's exploits, attributes, forms, sports, names, etc., in good taste by reciting traditional lore and singing songs of praise, in Sanskrit or even in one's mother tongue. Regarding manana, deliberation, the mind is fond of reasoning and deliberation. The ability of the mind to ponder and evaluate the efficacy of the worship, mantra japa, the attributes of Isha, his form, his divine sports and multifarious names, is the result of the benign glance of Ishwara. Hence, steady continuation of deliberation is the most important of all the means. Shravana, hearing, is effected when one associates with good men. Then, by extensive hearing, the kirtana of Pashupati becomes steady. In the end is manana, contemplation of Shiva's name, form, qualities, and pastimes, which is the most excellent. All these take place as a result of the benevolent glance of Lord Shiva. Sutta said, O saints, to elucidate the greatness of these three means, I shall narrate an anecdote of olden days for your sake. Please listen to it attentively. Long ago, my preceptor Vyasa, the son of sage Parashara, performed penance on the bank of the river Saraswati with some mental agitation. The divine sage Sanat Kumara, who happened to go that way in an aerial chariot resplendent like the sun, saw my preceptor there. Coming out of meditation, my preceptor saw the son of Brahma. The sage thereupon paid obeisance in a flutter of eagerness. He offered argya and a seat befitting the divinity of the sage. Being delighted, the divine sage spoke to my humble preceptor in words of great profundity. O sage, you must meditate upon the true object. The great Lord Shiva can be realized and seen. But why do you perform the penance here unattended? When Sanat Kumara addressed him thus, the sage Vyasa clarified his purpose. By the favor of divine elders like you, I have almost established the four ways of Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha in the world with due adherence to the Vedas. I have become a preceptor unto all. Still, it is surprising that the knowledge of the means of liberation has not dawned on me. I am performing penance for the sake of salvation, but I do not yet know how it can be achieved. O excellent Brahmanas, when thus requested by the sage Vyasa, the competent divine sage Sanat Kumara told him of the sure way of realizing salvation. There are three means in conformity with Vedic ideals, Shravana, Kirtana, and the highly efficacious manana of Shiva. Formerly, I too, confounded by other means, performed a great penance on the mountain Mandara. At the bidding of Shiva, the divine attendant Nandikeshwara arrived there. 
that sympathetic Lord of Ganas, witness of all, lovingly told me about the excellent means of salvation, Shravana, Kirtana, and Manana, in conformity with Vedic ideals. Hence, O holy sage, as advised by Shiva, these are the three means of salvation. Please practice them. He repeatedly advised Vyasa thus. After saying this to Vyasa, the son of Brahma mounted the aerial chariot accompanied by his followers and returned to his splendid and auspicious region. Thus, in brief, I have told you the ancient anecdote. The sages said, O Sutta, you have narrated Shravana, Kirtana, and Manana, the three means of salvation. But if a person is unable to practice these three, what shall he do to achieve liberation? What is that right whereby salvation will be possible without stress or strain? <laughs>